Hi, I'm Charlie. You're on Anarchy Acres. Welcome to the farm. We're going to talk today about Wisconsin pedigree number two, turkey red wheat. I'm standing in our Newman Road field, which is a mile down the street from the homestead, in a field of Wisconsin pedigree number two wheat. I want to tell you where that came from, why I'm so excited about it, and why I've spent four years of hard work to continue this more than 100 year old history of Wisconsin pedigree number two wheat. Now turkey red wheat is a wheat that was, um, became famous in Kansas during the 1870s and was selected from old world wheat that was grown in the area of the world we now call the Crimea. In fact, most of it was probably selected from a wheat called Krimka, uh, which, is, which is Russian for the, the region that we call Crimea. Now, this wheat, these wheats became known as Turkey Red, and there's a lot of uh, using that name over and over for different wheats, and the name is kind of diffuse. So when you say Turkey Red, you're really talking about a type, and you're talking about a lot of different wheats. What's exciting about it is that Turkey Red is close to what we call a land race, a wheat that has not had a lot of intensive selection, and has grown in the same place for a long time, and can adapt itself to the conditions under which it's grown. So in 1905, the University of Wisconsin botanists wanted to help out Wisconsin wheat farmers, and they went and found some turkey red wheat. And I believe this is the oldest turkey red wheat anywhere um, that has been safely kept um, since then. There are many turkey reds that could be, be older, in fact, would be older, um, but they don't have that known provenance going back to a date, time, and a place. So uh, it's really exciting that that's where Wisconsin pedigree number two came from. Now, the University of Wisconsin did select for the Wisconsin climate um, for about 10 years, and then and in 1917, they released it as, as Wisconsin pedigree number two. I learned about it um, in around 2014, and I went looking for seed, and I was able to get five grams of it from the University or the USDA uh, Small Grains Seed Archive. And I got five grams, which is about 100 seeds, and I planted that with the help of the donkeys in 2015. So since 2015, I've been carefully uh, cutting the wheat by hand, uh, threshing it by hand, um, conserving the seed, making sure it doesn't get contaminated, and then replanting it. Um, last year we were up to about 120 pounds and I put it all into this Newman Road field or nearly all of it and it was a really nice planting in September uh, 27th or so of 2018 and a week later within a week we had six inches of rain pounding on this field. Um, that washed out about two-thirds of the crop which I didn't feel really good about however what has survived has done very very well and what we're seeing is a repeat of the variance and the special characteristics of Wisconsin pedigree number two that I've seen since 2015. Now it's showing typical land race characteristics, like it's um, growing with higher protein. It's producing flour and wheat that has a higher protein content um, than wheat that, that uh, are not land race. And in fact, it's producing higher protein than turkey red wheat that comes from Kansas that's being sold in the market today. So I like that it's able to get more nutrients out of the soil, and that's typical of a land race wheat. They get more nutrients, they have deeper roots. Um, it also stands better. We had a pretty nasty uh, thunderstorm here a couple days ago, and the Wisconsin number two is standing much better um, than the Emke turkey wheat that I'm growing that came from Kansas. That kind of got knocked over. Furthermore, um, the rains of October 2018 the Wisconsin number two actually survived those rains better uh, than the Emke turkey uh, from Kansas. So I'm seeing some uh, many land race variation um, characteristics out of the Wisconsin pedigree number two, more robust, producing a better grain for baking. Uh, and it's beautiful. It has this red stem, which is the first thing that interested me about it when I harvested that first, very first five grams in 2018. We saw a red stem on the Wisconsin pedigree number two that very first year when we went to harvest it. And I had never seen a red stem in, tur in any wheat before. And it also got me thinking that since the origins of turkey red and the name are somewhat suspect, people say that the red is referring to the seed. It doesn't look uh, red to me at all. But this red stem um, that we're seeing is a possible characteristic that was lost in other turkey reds being sold today. And it's beautiful. The red comes from anthocyanin, which is a known antioxidant. It's the same thing um, that makes leaves turn color in the fall. 
and I'm really excited to see it there in this Wisconsin pedigree number two wheat. So we're going to be harvesting it uh, hopefully by the end of this week and we'll be selling some of it on our website or pick up at the farm. Of course I didn't get as much as I had hoped because of those rains washing out some of it, so much of it last year. But of course um, we'll be planting at least an acre, probably two acres of it this fall and we'll have plenty more for sale uh, in 2020. Uh, all going well and, and uh, so forth. So I hope you've learned a little bit about Wisconsin Pedigree Number 2 and about why I'm so excited about it. Um, please go to our website, anarchyacres.com. Uh, learn about um, Wisconsin Pedigree Number 2 and the other heritage land race weeds that we are bringing to market. Ask questions, take them back to wherever you are and be part of your own food system. Re remember, you can be a farmer in a flower pot. You don't need 500 acres. You can be part of your food system. You should be part of your food system for your own health, your family, your community, and the world. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day.